um, I'm going to give my welcome. So welcome everyone. My name is Valerie Nopic. I am the community leader for Care Grace, and uh, you have landed yourself in the Care Grace Rising Together series. This is a series that we've been offering every Saturday for, gosh, uh, a year plus, and we will continue to offer it through the through the rest of this calendar year. Um, at the very least. And that's because we've received such amazing feedback from all of you, our community, um, to continue this series. And that's really what this was all about. It's just an opportunity for us to gather together weekly uh, and share space, even though it's virtual space. But it's been a really wonderful way to connect. And every week we have a different teacher who rotates through and donates their time. Um, and today we have the honor of Claudia Jasper leading us. She is one of our Care Grace Warrior Ambassadors who lives in, in New York City. Um, and I will put her donation link into the chat. I'll let her speak to it. And I'm going to pass the microphone over to Claudia. Claudia, thank you so much for guiding us today and enjoy your practice, everyone. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure, guys. So the donation link will be for the Yoga Medicine Seva, uh, which is an organization I support through Yoga Medicine as a student and a practitioner. Uh, so if you need any more information, please don't hesitate to go to the website, Yoga, at Yoga Medicine, um, but it's the Seven Foundation. So you'll see that link, which Valerie has kindly uh, linked into our chat. So you can just put in even just the smallest donation helps women try to, you know, build upon creating a career, getting education, uh, different empowerment tools. So it's a really great um, uh, organization that I love to donate to. So if you have a chance and would like to get more information about it, please do not hesitate. Go to the link below. Uh, we would love the support. So yeah, my name is Claudia Jasper. Welcome to currently um, my family home here in Southampton, New York. So I'm currently in the Hamptons, but I am based out of New York City. Uh, I'm excited to do this flow for you. Find your own compass. Uh, the compass pose is the pose that we are going to peek towards. But as we move on the mat, and I am a, typically an athletic vinyasa teacher, so please be mindful of any shapes that I call out. I'll always give variations. I always utilize blocks and other props. So if you have props and you want to utilize them, please do not hesitate. Child pose is home base. But as you move through this flow, keeping in mind that finding your own compass is also feeling the shapes for yourself. Some shapes might feel good one day, some shapes may not feel good the next day, and that's all part of our practice. Each day will be different, and just following the cues and the ebb and flow that the body gives us uh, to keep our practice mindful and strong at the end of the day. So we're going to start grounded in a seat. Uh, I like to take Shikasana. If you want to take your asana, you can. I'm going to sit also on a block to bring my knees a little bit below my hip flexors. I don't know about you, but if you're a runner or a spinner or do any sort of cardiovascular that requires you to lift your knees high, this might feel really, really good. Uh, so bringing those knees possibly below the hips, but you can also sit on a mat, right? And take a moment to invite the eyelashes to touch. And through that simple invitation, we find a softness. As we begin to redirect our internal awareness towards the sit bones, and feel them as they draw down into mat or into block. Draw the navel up and in and sense length being drawn to the spine. As you begin to feel the shoulders stack over hips. And taking that conscious moment for yourself to roll the shoulder heads back and feel the shoulder blades as they glide down the back. Noticing a broadness of chest and collarbone region. As with this openness of chest that we find an openness of heart, body, mind, and spirit. And prayer draws to our heart center, keeping our heart lifted to our prayer, beginning the class together with the sacred sound of OM, A-U-M, OM, extending this vibration into the universe, into the hearts and homes of those that may need just a little bit more love, healing, and peace in their lives. Take a deep inhale, yogis, fill up. Oh. Let that vibration settle for a moment. And gently open the eyes. And we're actually going to start seated on the mat. I'm going to stay seated towards you, but if you want to turn to the top of the mat, you can as well. Grounding the soles of the feet to your mat. All we're going to do is just let the knees rock side to side, almost like they're windshield wipers of a car. And just starting to get into those hip pockets. 
It's gonna be a hip heavy flow, a lot of hip openers. We're gonna build a little bit of heat. It'll be fun. And then all we're gonna do is just let those knees drop all the way to the right and take a nice little twist to the right. So left hand draws to the outer right thigh, right hand, find it behind you, find a nice little twist. Navel draws up and in, keep the chest lifted and try to roll those shoulder heads back. Take an inhale and an exhale. Slowly come to center, just switch sides here. Take a little rock over to the left. Right hand draws to the outer left thigh. Left hand draws behind you, chest is lifted, spine is long. Take an inhale and an exhale. Slowly come back to center, come back to that little windshield wipers of the knees, side to side. You might notice you might scoot a bit, totally natural. And we're going to come to neutral here, ground the soles of the feet to the mat, hands draw behind you, thumbs to you, inhale the hips up, reverse tabletop, and just drop the head back. And maybe take a gentle rock forward and back, notice anything going on. And we're going to take that right ankle and we're going to place it on top of the left thigh. And we're just going to say hi to the glute for a moment to see what's going on. No major commitment, just say hi. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Inhale the hips back to your sky. We're just going to switch sides here. Keep it even seated. Left ankle over right thigh. Take a nice little seat in your figure four. And we're going to take a nice little inhale. And exhale. Inhale the hips back to your sky. Just pause here for a beat. And gently release. You're going to roll over your knees and your shins. We're going to meet at tabletop. Stack the shoulders over your wrists, hips over the knees. Plenty of room in between those fingers, those eyes and elbows are forward, neck is long. And finding cat cow, on your inhale, we're gonna drop belly, rib cage, tilt the tailbone to the sky as the gaze draws up. On that exhale, tilt the tailbone under, navel the spine, push off the mat, gaze in. Inhaling to lower. Exhales to push. Let's do three more. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Meet me in a nice neutral spine, flat back. Inhale your right arm to the sky, reach up. Really try to open up the chest, draw that right arm back as far as you can, belly in. Then on your exhale, thread the right arm underneath your left, turn your right palm up to the ceiling and let the head and shoulder just draw down to the mat. You can stay here or maybe extend the left arm long in front of you. You can stay here or maybe find a nice little half bind, back of the left hand, lower back, or grabbing your inner right thigh. The key here is we're trying to open up the back of that right arm. We should begin to feel that shoulder blade glide away from the spine. Take an inhale and an exhale. If you are bound, inhale that left arm back to your sky. Exhale the left hand to your mouth. Inhale the right arm back to your sky reach. Exhale the right hand down to the mouth. Inhale the left arm to your sky reach. Exhale, turn left arm underneath right, turning left palm up to your ceiling. And again, be light. Allow the shoulder to draw down to the mat. Side of the head possibly just touches. Maybe you reach right arm long. Or maybe you find a half line. Finding what feels best today. And again, the, the point here truly is to try to get that left shoulder blade to take a moment away from the spine. Take an inhale. And an exhale. If you are bound, inhale your right arm back to your sky. Exhale the right hand down to the mat. Inhale the left arm to your sky reach. Exhale left hand to your mat. From your tabletop, keeping those knees hips with distance apart, we're gonna tuck the toes. Now for a moment, I want you to cinch your ribs in, right? As if you're wearing a corset. Belly drives up and in, and utilize the palm to shoot energy up. From here, we're going to hover our knees about an inch off the mat. And we're just going to hold here. Nothing fancy. Just breathing, ujjayi to breath, in and out of the nose for three. 
Breathing here for two. And one, lift your hips to a downward facing dog. Pedal out your knees here. Shift your hips a bit from side to side. You can shake your head yes, you can shake your head no. I'm a big fan of fluttering lips. I always find that we store a bit of sound in those bodies. So if you need to flutter the lips, let out an H-A, ha. And from your down dog feet are about inner hip width apart, maybe slightly wider. I'm gonna bring them slightly wider just to take a little pressure off my lower back. Navel's drawn up and in, and maybe your gaze is drawn towards navel or upper thigh. Then on your inhale, like a wave, we're gonna roll it forward to a high plank pose. Then on our exhale, we're gonna lift our hips back to our down dog. Try to draw those heels just a little bit closer to the mat, just to guide open the backs of the legs. Take two more like this, inhaling the high plank. Exhale, pike those hips up, downward facing dog. Last one, inhale, high plank. Exhale, pike those hips up, downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg to your sky, down dog split. Bend the knee and yawn open that hip for me. Now make some big circles with your right knee. Just finding a little guided openness of that right hip. And take it in the opposite direction. Come back to this open hip, right knee is bent. Try to square off your shoulder. The tendency here is to dip into that left shoulder girdle. Now lengthen the right leg and just pause here for a beat. Now slowly begin to peel your left heel off the mat and try to get that right leg just to lift a little bit higher. Take two more breaths. And from here, flex your right foot, square off your hips and lower your left heel down to the mat. Then draw your right knee to your nose and hold. Down dog, slip. Right knee across the body, left tricep, hold. Down dog, slip. Draw your right knee to right tricep, pause here for a moment, lightly step that right foot outside of your right hand. Inhale your right arm up and kind of nice big twist. Modification here, if you want to drop the left knee, you can. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Right hand draws down to your mat and just pause. If you're utilizing blocks here, you can place them at the highest setting, right inside of that right foot. Then on our inhale, we're gonna lengthen out the right leg and draw our hips back. Exhale to rebend, dip the hips as you pull the heart forward. So it's a little bit like an up dog. Shoulders draw down the back. Two more like this. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, to rebend. Last one, inhale, exhale. On your next inhale, we're gonna lengthen out the right leg. I want you to keep your left foot where it is if you can. Flex your right foot. Now, as you kick that heel forward, as if you were trying to draw the mat towards you, I want you to drag it back. Take two more breaths here. Then we're going to be a bit of a traveling yogi here. We're going to start to walk our blocks or hands to the left. As we walk blocks and hands to the left, spin the feet so they ground to the mat. So you're going to straddle four fold. Then on your next inhale, we're going to bend the right knee and try to guide open that left inner thigh. The inhales draw you to center. Bend the left knee, guide open the left inner thigh. And the inhales come to center. So right. And then left. We're not doing anything major. We're just saying hi to the inner thighs, just seeing what's going on. We're going to be utilizing them a bit. Take one more full round wherever you're at. Meet me in neutral. And we're going to walk it back and step it back into a plank pose. From your plank pose, shoulders are stacked over the wrist, eyes and elbows are forward. And again, pushing energy up, right? So you're not sinking into the shoulders. Kicking those heels back, cinching the ribs in, belly draws up and in. And again, you can always lower the knees if you need to. Lowering all the way down to the belly, one straight line for me. 
Pull through twin eyes, baby cobra, shoulders up and down the back, elbows point back. Exhale the forehead to your mat. Tuck your toes, seat draws to your feet, a tuck toe child pose. Lift your hips to a downward facing dog. This time from your down dog, on your inhale, come directly to an up dog. A little tip here, keep your toes tucked for me as you dip the hips and pull the heart forward. Exhale, pike the hips up, downward dog. Two more, exactly the same. Inhaling to an up dog. Exhale, pike the hips up, down dog. Last one, inhaling to an up dog. Exhale, pike the hips up, down dog. Inhale your left leg to the sky, down dog, split. Bend the knee and yawn open that hip. And again, make some nice big circles here. And get into that hip. Build a little heat there. And take it in the opposite direction. And come back to this openness of the hip. And again, it's a little like a half moon if you think about it. We're aiming to stack this left hip on top of the right. Try to square off the shoulders for me if you can. Then lengthen out your left leg. I like to keep my foot pointed here. Slowly peel the right heel off the mat and try to get the left leg just slightly higher to the sky. You're here for two and one. Flex the left foot, square off your hips and lower your right heel gently down to the mat. Then draw left knee to your nose and hold. Down dog split. Left knee across the body, right tricep and pause. Down dog split. Left knee to left tricep lightly. Left foot steps outside the left hand. Inhaling the left arm up, we twist. Try to square off those shoulders. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Left palm draws down to your mat. And again, if you're using blocks like myself, I like to use blocks with this one. Use them. And on that inhale, we're going to lengthen out the left leg, draw those hips back. Exhale to rebend, dip the hips down to your back, pull the heart forward, shoulders up, and draw down the back. Two more like this. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale to rebend. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. On your next inhale, lengthen up that left leg. Try to keep your right foot right where it is. Flex your left foot. Kick that heel forward as you are suddenly dragging it back, like you're trying to pull the mat towards you. Oh, take a nice big inhale here. And exhale. One more big inhale. And exhale. Taking a little bit of a journey here, start to walk hands or blocks towards your right and start to spin the feet into that straddle forward fold. And a second little variation of opening up those inner thighs. We're gonna get to skandasana and skater. We're just not there yet. So maybe bending the right knee, open up the inner left. Come to center, bend the left, open up the inner right. We're kind of just preparing those inner thighs for some of the guided work we're gonna do with them. We'll take one more full round here. I'm a big fan of warming it up before we get into it. And let's meet in center. We're going to come back to the top of that mat and meet in our plank pose. I'm a big fan of plank because your core is best friend. And from our plank, we're going to do one little core exercise only because I love them. We're going to take our right foot. We're going to step it to the right. The inhale draw to center. Step it to the left. To center. Right. Left. Right. Left. If you want to take it faster, make it a little hoppy, you can. And you're just going to breathe in here for five, for four, for three, for two. Last one. Pause. Now. You can find Chaturanga here. You can lower to the belly into a baby cobra. If you'd like to take knees, chest, chin, please do so. Take the variation that works for you in your vinyasa. 
So one of the three, Chaturanga, Up Dog or Baby Cobra, and we're all going to meet in the Downward Facing Dog. Wasn't that fun? Take a nice big inhale, open the mouth, H-A, ha. Take a nice tiptoe walk to the top of the mat, nice and slow, one foot after the other. Feet are going to come inner hips with distance apart. Ground your right hand to your mat. Bend your right knee deeply for me. Try to keep your left leg straight. You can also use a block here. Inhale the left arm up and twist. Take a nice big inhale. And exhale. Gently release it, just switch sides. Ground your left palm, bend your left knee deeply. Right leg keep it long. Inhale your right arm up and twist. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Gently release, grab opposite elbows and ragdoll sway. You can keep a slight bend in those knees. Sway side to side, forwards and backwards, shaking the head yes, yeah, shaking the head no. Release the elbows, let the arms be heavy here. Keep that hollow in the belly, slight bend in the knees, and a slow roll up one vertebra at a time, pressing into the soles of the feet as we root to rise. Once you've hit the top, bring the big toes to touch. Roll those shoulders up and down the back. Palms towards the front of your room, finding a nice mountain stance here. Tadasana. We're going to take three rounds of sun salutation A. Inhale, arms rise, palms touch. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana, your forward fold. Inhaling to a flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, step back. You can shoot back, Chaturanga, or lower to the belly. Up dog or your baby cobra. The exhales lift the hips to a nice downward facing dog. Take five breaths. In and out of the nose. Take two more breaths. Then inhale, bend your knees, gaze in between your hands, a light hop, maybe a step, top of the mat. Exhale, fold, let it go. Root to rise, reverse swan out of the arms, all the way back up, press into the soles of the feet, find a back bend here for me, push your hips forward, drop your head back. Exhale, arms to your side, Samus TTP. Two more, inhale, arms rise, palms touch. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, your forward fold. Inhaling to a flat back. Exhale, planting palms, step back or shoot back, Chaturanga or lower to the belly. Up dog or your baby cobra. The exhales lift the hips to a downward facing dog, taking five breaths. That Ujjayi Pranayama in and out of the nose. Take three more breaths. Final breath here. Then inhale, bend your knees, gaze in between those hands, a light hop or a step, top and back. Exhale, fold, let it go. Root to rise, reverse one, add the arms all the way back up, gaze and look, a reach up to the sky. How tall can you become? Finding a nice little back bend here. So navel in it, you push the hips forward, drop that head back. Exhale, arms to your side, Sama CTP. Let's just do one more good measure. Inhale, arms rise, palms touch. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana, your forward fold. Inhaling to a nice flat back here. Exhale, planting palms, step back or shoot back, Chaturanga. Inhaling, up dog or nice baby cobra. The exhales lift the hips to a downward facing dog. Five breaths. In and out of the nose. Take one more breath. Then inhale, bend your knees, gaze in between your hands, a light hop or a step, top of the mat. 
Exhale, fold. Root to rise, reverse swan of the arms all the way back up. Gaze up, look up, reach up to the sky. Find a nice back bend. Push your hips forward, drop your head back. Exhale, arms to your side. Sama Sitiki. Inhaling to a chair pose. Utakasana. From our chair, we're going to take a moment here just to kind of guide open these shoulders. So extend the arms forward towards the front of your mat. Interlock your fingers for me. Now turn the palms to the front of the room. Inhale the arms up. And for some of you, it might even draw behind the ears. Keep pressing that palm up. Take an inhale and an exhale. Take one more inhale here and on your exhale, we're gonna fold over our legs, drive our arms behind us, interlock the fingers and drive the fists forward. Take a nice big inhale and exhale. Inhaling back to our chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhaling to a flat back. Exhale, step that left foot back, drop your back left knee, untuck your toes, inhale your arms to the sky. Take your right hand, grab your left wrist, and take a nice little gentle draw of that left arm to the right side of the room. Take an inhale, and an exhale. Slowly come to center. You can use a block here if you wish. Left hand draws to a block or to your mat. Reach your right arm over here. Take an inhale, and an exhale. Inhale the arms to the sky. Exhale, palms down to your mat. Down dog split, right leg will lift. Bend the knee and open up that hip. Then on your next exhale, draw your right knee to your nose and hold. Lightly step your right foot forward in line with your right thumb. Spin the back left heel down 45 degrees, rising warrior one. Right knee, we want to make sure it's pointed forward. Get it to that right hip to draw back. Your back left foot is grounded all the way to the pinky toe edge. And the navel draws up and in. Drape the arms behind you. Interlock your fingers. Make a nice big fist for me. Then on your inhale, lengthen out the right leg. As you do so, begin to drive that fist down towards your back left heel to crack the heart open. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Gently re-bend your right knee, devotional warrior. It's a front heavy shape. So as you hinge forward, draw that right hip back. Keep drawing it back, keep drawing it back, and drive that fist forward. Take an inhale, and an exhale. Root to rise, warrior one. Open up, warrior two. Right knee is forward, back foot is grounded, parallel, sitting deep into those legs, shoulders down the back. Can you sit one inch deeper into that warrior two? Give those glutes a nice little pinch. Then turn your right palm to the ceiling, reverse your triangle, tip the shape back for me. Then reaching forward, triangle stance, Tadikonasana. Right hand placed onto your shin. Maybe there's a block handy inside of your right foot or toe lock if it's in your practice. Left arm reaches to your step. Lifting those kneecaps, belly's drawn up and in. Take an inhale and an exhale. If your hand is on a block or if you're in a toe lock, I'm going to have you gently remove it and turn the back of the hand to the inner thigh. Excuse me, inner calf. And all we're going to do is gentle little pulses. They're very gentle. And you're going to breathe here for three, four, two. Reverse your triangle, tip it back. Pivot your left toe slightly. We're going to find first side skater. So bend the left knee, flex your right foot forward. Don't be shy about that booty. Tailbone back and navel up and in. Skater to your right, flex your left. One more time to your left, flex your right. Left forearm draws to the top of the left thigh, right arm reaches over the ear. Take an inhale 
and an exhale. Gaze to your right foot, extended side angle to the top of the mat. Right forearm, top of right thigh, left arm reaches over here. Be mindful of that right shoulder. Notice if you're sinking into it. I want you to press away from your right quad. Then flip the palm, reverse your triangle, tip the whole shape back. Two more like this, forearm to thigh. Some of you may even be able to do hand to your mat, left arm over here. Flip the palm, reverse your triangle, tip it back. Two more like this, forearm to thigh or hand to your mat, left arm reaches. Flip the palm, reverse your triangle, tip it back. Meeting in our extended side angle, forearm to thigh or hand to mat, left arm will reach. Stay here or we might find a half bind. Back of the left hand to your lower back. Some of you maybe grab the inner right thigh. If you have a full bind in your practice, by all means take it. But for most of us, we're gonna stay in a half bind. From here, all we're gonna do is slowly begin to lengthen out our right leg and find our triangle stance again, half bound. Take an inhale and an exhale. Gently rebend that right knee, gaze forward, half moon pose. All right, so you can use a block here. I'm just gonna adjust for space reasons. We're gonna lift the back left leg, flex the foot, and I want to, I'm encouraging you to keep that half bind. Leaning back into the forearm, find one focal point. Navel draws up and in. Take an inhale and an exhale. Release just a half bind. Reach the left arm to your side. Take an inhale and an exhale. Left hand draws down to your mat. Again, you can utilize blocks here. Standing split pose, left leg to your side. And then on that inhale, we're going to tap our left toes down to your mat. On your exhale, lift the left leg to your sky. Two more like this. Inhale, tap. Exhale, reach. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. On your next inhale, slowly lower your left foot all the way back. We're going to meet in a high crescent lunge. Open it up, warrior two. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. Circle your hands inside of your right foot and pause. Walk your right foot to your right. Step your left foot outside of the left hand, the locks in the squat, top of the mat. Triceps, elbows in between the thighs, prayer to heart center, and just pause here. Some of you may want to sit on a block, right? So if this shape is really uncomfortable and you notice your heels are just all the way up into the sky, Sit on a block and walk your feet forward so you can ground those heels to your mat. Some of you might even be able to get your feet more parallel. It's just an indication of how open those hips are. From here, we're going to ground the right palm to your mat, left arm reaches to your sky. Take an inhale. And on that exhale, use your right tricep to help guide open that right hip just a little bit more as you twist further to the left. The inhales draw you back to center, switching sides. Left palm will ground. Inhale your right arm. In. Take an inhale. And on that exhale, use that left tricep help to guide open the left inner thigh as you reach more so towards the right side of the room. Slowly come to center, ground the palms to your mat, lengthen out your leg, pivot the feet forward, find the forward fold. Hop your feet hips width distance apart. Yogi toe up your big toes, point your middle finger. Inhaling to a flat back here. Exhale, fold over your legs. And put a bend into those knees if you need to. Try to reach those sits bones high to the sky. Let the crown of the head simply draw down to your mat. Take a nice big inhale. And exhale. Gently release your toe lock and bring those big toes to touch. Inhaling to a flat back. Exhale, step your right foot back. Drop your back right knee, untuck your toes, inhale the arms to the sky. So we're going to do the same jazziness we did on side A on side B. 
So grabbing your right wrist this time with the left hand, draw that right arm to the left side of the room. Try to spin the heart open. Notice it if you're hunching forward, you should be able to see your ceiling almost. Exhale, release your right hand, draws either to mat or to a block. Left arm reaches over your hair. Spin that heart up. Inhale it all the way back to, all the way back to center. Palms draw down to your mat, down dog, split left leg lifts, bend the knee, yawn, open that hip. Then on your exhale, draw your left knee to your nose and lightly step that left foot in line with left thumb. Spin the back right heel down, rising warrior one. And setting up the shape for yourself, make sure that left knee is pointed forward, take that left hip, draw it back a bit. Then drape the arms behind you, interlock your fingers for me. As you begin to drive that fist down towards your back right heel, lengthen out your left leg and lift that heart to your sky. Gently rebend the left knee, finding devotional warrior. Again, it's a front of heavy pose. So shifting forward, as you do so, draw that left hip back. And for some of you, right shoulder draws inside of the left calf, reach the arms forward. Take a nice big inhale and exhale. Root to rise, warrior one. Open up, warrior two. Left knee is forward, back foot is grounded, shoulders draw them down the back, centering that torso. Then turn that left palm to your ceiling, reverse your triangle, tip the shape back. Then reaching forward, triangle stance, three punas and the left hand to your shin, block, toe lock, I'm gonna use a block. Right arm reaches to your side. Lifting those kneecaps, and we'll be back in the shape as you know again. Take an inhale, and an exhale. If your hand is in toe lock or on the block, you're gonna gently remove it and turn the back of the hand to the inside of that left calf. And just tackling these little oblique muscles here on the left side, we're just going to pulse, a little pulse. You're here for three, for two, you should feel it. Reverse the triangle, tip it back. Now we're going to find skandasana to our right. So you can always take skater, it's just a nice high skandasana. Skandasana is low. Flex your left heel forward. Skandasana or a skater to your left. Flex your right. One more time to your right. Flex your left. Just pause there for a beat. So if you're in skater, it's going to be that same thing. Right forearm, left arm reaches. For those in skandasana, it's right palm down, left arm reaches. Take an inhale and an exhale. Gaze towards your left foot. You're going to find extended side angle. Left forearm to thigh, some of you may be pan to a block. Right arm will reach over the ear. We'll do a little flow here. Flip the palm, reverse your triangle, tip it back. Two more like this, forearm to thigh, top arm reaches. Flip the palm, reverse the triangle, tip it back. Last one, forearm to thigh, top arm reaches. Flip the palm, reverse your triangle, tip it back. Come back to your extended side angle, right? So forearm to thigh, right arm reaches. And we're just gonna play a little bit with the shape. So we're gonna all find a half bind. Back of that right hand to the lower back or grabbing your inner left thigh, depending on your practice. Some practitioners might wanna come into their full bind, totally. Just notice if your chest is turning down to the mat, can you spin it up? Be mindful of those hamstrings, slowly lengthen out your left leg, so you're either in a bound triangle, if you're bound, or you're in triangle stance, half bound. Take an inhale, and an exhale. Gently re-bend the left knee, I'm just gonna adjust for space purposes. Reaching forward with the block or with left hand, finding half moon. I encourage you to try to keep the bind. Worst case scenario is you fall out. Falling is part of the journey. What I like about half bind in a half moon is it forces us to truly lean back a bit. 
which we tend to not do when our arm is reaching in the sky. From here, reach the right arm up and pause. Just some strength and stillness. Keep flexing that right heel back, shooting energy out. Standing split, right hand draws down to your mat, right leg is in the sky. It'll be a little bit like a rock head here. So on your inhale, we're gonna tap our right toes down to our mat. Exhale, lift the right leg to the sky. Just two more. Inhale, tap, exhale, reach. You should feel in the back of that left leg. Last one, inhale. Exhale, and just pause. Slowly step that right foot way back, way back, way back, and meet me in a high crescent lunge. You might be able just to jump right into it. Open up, warrior two. Flip the palm, reverse it, tip it back. Circle the hands inside of the left foot. Walk your left foot to the left. So it's a little bit like a lizard, you're just on your palms. Step your right foot outside of the right hand. You're in a Malasana squat once again. We're going to be here for a beat, and then we're going to come into a little bit of warm-up before our compass. So from your Malasana, again, if you need to utilize a block here, please do so. My husband loves to block with his chain. So from here, right palm will plant, left arm will reach. Some of you stay right here. This might be just enough. If you feel like taking it a step further, maybe you find a half bind. Back of the left hand, the lower back. Keep gazing over left shoulder. Stay here, or maybe right hand reaches and grabs left for a full bind. Take an inhale and an exhale. Gently release it. We're just going to switch sides. Left palm will plant. Inhale that right arm up and find a nice big twist. Lean back a bit. And again, this might be just enough. Maybe taking a half bind would feel just a little bit better on the body. Back of the right hand, lower back, or inner left up. Maybe left hand reaches and grabs the right. Keep gazing over that right shoulder. Take an inhale. And an exhale. And we're all going to be in a molasses. Extend the arms forward and take a seat. Body Kanasana, soles of feet, touch. So I'm going to turn to you. So we're going to come into a little bit of our compass. So holding on to those feet a bit like you're holding on to a book, and all we're going to do is wing the knees. As if your knees were creating wings and were flying like butterflies. I'm having a little guided conversation about life. <laughs> Let's take a few moments here. Pausing in neutral. Okay, so we're going to just pause. And we're just going to shimmy the heels out just a little bit further away from us. Navel up and in. And all I want you to do is just pause and notice any tension drawing to the inner thighs. Then we're going to pull the chest forward. And I want you to draw your forearms to your calves. And you're just going to pause there. This might be just enough for some people. Okay? Really listen. For some, their listening means that they need to take it one step further. Maybe you begin to hinge forward a little bit more. Maybe you hinge forward a little bit more. Keeping that belly in, just find a nice forward fold in your body canossana leg. Some of you crown of head might ground to the inner arches. Mine won't do that right now. Take a nice big inhale and exhale. Gently release, walk it back. Extend the left leg long. Step your right foot outside of your left thigh. Hook your right knee in with the left arm. Right hand behind you, find a nice big twist. I'm going to take a nice little counter twist for me. Slowly come to center. Right ankle draws on top of your left thigh. Now, from here, I want you to yogi toe lock your big right toe with your pointer middle finger. You can keep the left leg long. Some people really like to have knee bent. If you want to bend it and that's more comfortable for you, please do so. For me, it is more comfortable. If you'd like to keep it long, you can. All right, there's no right or wrong here. We're going to kick our right foot forward. 
as if we're about to load a bow and arrow, we're going to draw this right knee back. Then we're going to kick the right heel forward. Then we're going to draw it back. Then we're going to kick it forward. And just take a few more of these. Let's say two more. And on this last, I want you to load it, pull it all the way back. Then I want you to take your right heel and draw it to the, the elbow crease of your left arm and hold on to your right half as if you were kind of cradling a baby. If this is too much, you can hold on to the knee and just draw it in. All right, so either variation. Let's take a few more breaths in. And we're gonna come into compass. So this is one, these are one of those shapes, seated compass, uh, that A, take time, all right, to be patient. Patience is a virtue, as they say. Uh, it's practice, it's consistency, but it's also building upon flexibility within hamstrings, your inner thighs, with adductors, etc. It also requires a lot of opening in shoulders. So keeping all those foundations in, in the back of your head, being kind to yourself and kind of just playing with the shape with an enthusiasm, right, with a joy, so we can find a lightness in it. So from here, all we're gonna do is take our right foot. I like to grab my right heel with my left hand, okay? This is so I can get my right knee as close as I can to the top of my right shoulder. So trying to get that knee, kind of wiggle it up there. And for most of us, mate, it's gonna draw up right below it, okay? From here, we're gonna take our left hand to the pinky toe edge of our right foot from the top. Right hand draws down to the mat. Now, as if you were about to kick someone right in front of you, you're gonna start to kick and kick, and kick, and then slowly that leg begins to lift. And you find that compass shape. Keep spinning that part open, and then try to take two more breaths here. And gently release it, and let it go, it's over. Come back to your body, Kanasana, soles of feet touched, grab onto the feet and just swing it. One thing I do notice also is, you know, we have, one side is always a little bit more open than the other. So keeping that, keeping that in the back of your mind as well. So for me, there's really one side that's a little easier than the other. So my other side is a little easier for me, but it is important to keep things even steven. So always doing one side if you do the other side. So keeping it even steven, walk those, kick those heels back just a little bit. We're gonna find that forward fold once again, Baddha Konasana. Grabbing onto the feet as if you're opening up a book or a newspaper. Forearms draw down towards your calves and just pause there. This might be enough. For a lot of people, this is enough. For others, maybe you find a deeper forward fold. For others, you might find a deeper forward fold. For some, forehead drop to the inside of the earth. Take a few breaths there. All right, we were in a game class, it could possibly be six minutes in this shape. So finding as much comfort in the discomfort as you can. Slowly walk those hands back. And again, keeping it even speed and extend the right leg long. Left foot, stamp it outside of your right leg. Hook your left knee in with your right arm. Left hand draws behind you and find a twist. The reason I like this is that we can really draw that knee in, which is a little bit different than when our tricep is here. We have a little less mobility. We can really draw that knee in and really get into that glute a bit. Take an inhale and an exhale. Take a nice counter twist for me. One of my teachers calls this the bow to self. Counter twists are just as important. And slowly come to center. So again, like I stated before, every yogi has a specific way they like to do this. So. Left ankle on top of the right thigh. I like to start it here, okay? Just kind of creating the number four of sorts. My left leg is still long, but I'm gonna draw it in in almost like a double pigeon situation. Yogi, toe lock your big left toe with your pointer middle finger and extend that left foot forward. So either that right leg is long or it's bent in, okay? Yogi's choice. All we're gonna do is kick that heel forward and then we're gonna draw it back. So like we're loading a bow and arrow. Let's take two more from here. We're going to come back as if we've loaded that bow and arrow. 
And we're gonna take this left heel and draw it inside the crease of the right elbow. And as if we were cradling a baby, we're gonna cradle our left calf. And again, from here, you're gonna find one side might be easier than the other. It is completely normal. It's just an indication of one side being more open than the other. All we're gonna do is Yogi toe lock our big left toe for a moment with our left hand, grab our left heel with our right, release the toe. Now from here, we're gonna shimmy that left knee on top of the left shoulder to the best of your ability. For most people, it's probably here. For some, it's all the way up. It, Different strokes for different folks, whatever really works here. Time is time is of the essence. So top of the hand draw to the top of the foot, grabbing onto the pinky toe edge of that left foot. Left hand, keep it out there. It's your, it's your prop, it's there to support you. Now, as if you're about to kick someone in front of you, you're gonna start kicking to the palm. As you kick, your leg will naturally turn to that left side of the room. Keep drawing the foot in and keep spinning the heart open. Some of you might even point the whatever works. Take two more breaths here. And gently release it. And meet me back in Baddha Kanasa. That was fun! So that seated compass, kind of a fun little shape. I like to play with it. It is a big hip opener. Um, it is one that you have to play with a lot of hip openers to get to. Uh, so overall, it's one of my favorites. So I hope that was fun. We're going to find figure four on our backs just to kind of guide open our hips a bit and find two back bends. So let's come on to our backs. Right ankle, I want you to draw it on top of your left thigh. Draw your left knee into your chest and give it a nice big squeeze here. Oh, it should feel good. Take an inhale. And an exhale, keeping those feet nice and flexed for me. Are you utilizing any props that you may need to use? Sometimes I like to use a hand towel here, especially if I feel like I'm like really reaching for that knee. Try to relax, be soft in the shape. The softer we are, the deeper we can get into any areas of tension and the more space we can create. For some stay here, others might extend the left leg long. Take a moment here just to point and flex the foot, roll out the ankle. And you're on your feet a lot. You spun the feet sideways, up and down, heels up, heels down. Just come a little TLC. I always find a snap, crackle, pop in there. My runners, this is a good one to do. What we're going to do is gently re-bend the left knee, extend your left leg long, draw your right knee into your chest, give it a nice big squeeze. And then take that right knee across the body to your left, gaze to the right, and kind of a nice little twist. Take an inhale. And an exhale. Slowly come to center. Let's just switch sides. So figure four, left ankle draws to the top of the right thigh. Draw that right knee. And again, utilizing straps or blocks. I found that, with, especially with runners, this can be a very kind of taxing shape in the beginning if you're not as accustomed to it. So utilizing any props to help draw that knee in. Or we want to be able to soften into it. So if you find that you're really struggling to grab onto either the back of the leg or even the shin, Use these props, even a blanket, a t-shirt. Flexing the feet. And if you, if you can always stay here, this is always an option. Or extend the right leg to your sky, grab the back of the right thigh, take a nice roll out of that ankle. Foot. 
when you're ready, re-bend that right knee, extend the right leg long, draw that left knee into your chest, give it a nice big squeeze. And then take this left hand across the body to the right, gaze to the left. Slowly come to center, find a very quick bridge pose. Soles of the feet draw to the mat, arms drape along the side body. And all we're going to do is press into the heel, just lift the hips up for a moment and push your hip points toward your ceiling just to open up that abdominal wall. Take a nice big inhale and exhale. Slowly lower all the way to your back. Knees draw into your chest. Happy baby pose. Grabbing the pinky toe edge of the feet. Soles of the feet point toward your ceiling. And just take a moment there. I like to rock side to side. We've played a lot with hip openers, not necessarily the straddle. The straddle is another way you can enter into compass. So if you want to open up those legs into a nice big straddle, hands draw to the inner thighs. Just let them guide open for a moment. When you're ready, hands draw to the outer thighs, draw the legs to touch, and I staff pose here. And maybe you have a wall handy. You can always put the legs to the wall. Just pause there for a moment, let the legs simply hover in the sky. And you can stay here as your Travasana, if your legs are especially up a wall, or draw the knees into your chest. Give yourself that final squeeze, possibly forehead draws to the knees, finding your great rock here. Squeezing towards the midline of the body. You're breathing here for two. And one Shavasana. And just find a minute here in Shavasana just to reset. I always like a good reset. Let the arms drape. Let the shoulders draw down. Re-invite the eyelashes to touch. And just take that moment of pause. When you're ready, slowly begin to wiggle fingers, begin to wiggle your toes. Draw just a little bit of life back into the body. Arms reaching long behind you, big stretch. Your fingers all the way back down to the toes. Knees draw into your chest and in your way, your time, making your journey back to a rooted seat. At the top of your mat, your sukhasana, your superior seat. <sighs> and once you've found that seat, take a moment to re-invite eyes to touch. You want the tongue to hang heavy away from the roof of the mouth. And just notice for yourself any shifts in the body or the mind as you Prayer draws to our third eye center, our guiding light and intuition on our journey. May it continue to guide each of you always. The light of me bows in honor to light in each of you. Namaste, yogi. Good job. That was fun. Thank you. That was great. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. It's a fun shape. It's one of my favorite little kind of fun shapes. It's a fun hip opener. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please don't hesitate. You can always find me on Instagram or through Kira Grace or all the ambassador sites. It's nice to see everybody. Stay healthy. Stay well. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Claudia. That was wonderful. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. See you next week. See you next week. Hey, Bye, guys. Hey, Valerie.